This is the Scrap Metal and Commodities Recycling Port by Ben Lee, Roloff, Lugger, and Open Top Trailers, and Rowley and Gold from Meta Recycling, May 9th, 2016. In this report, last week commodity prices had their ups and downs with steel up and copper down. U.S. steel production rose yet again last week and is now near the 2016 high that was briefly hit a few months ago, but more importantly, near about seven month highs. This is due to the U.S. economy doing okay, not great, and tariffs on finished goods steel remain kicking in. Therefore, U.S. steel mills are replacing imports that are dropping off. The oil rig count remains going in one direction, down. The count hit a new six-year low and is now down about 80% from 18 months ago, but oil prices remain up about 70% from the low of a few months ago. If oil prices rise further, we may see more U.S. drilling activity, leading to more steel being used in these rigs. U.S. ferrous scrap prices as forecast were up last week $25 to $40 a gross ton, depending upon the region and the grade of material. This makes two months of major increases and we're at levels not seen in about nine months. Hot rolled coil finished steel fin continued its rise up as well and are at levels not seen in over a year as multiple steel mills announced price in increases last week. This will clearly put stress on manufacturers that buy finished steel on the open market. 304 stainless scrap prices showed downward pressure, but 400 stainless, the lower grade not shown here, did rise last week, along with ferrous prices. Copper ended the week down more than 10 cents, partly due to weak manufacturing data in China. Yet on this five-year copper chart, we see copper is somewhat above its seven-year lows, but there is really no upward or downward trend. Aluminum prices also came down a bit last week, along with copper. And when looking at aluminum's five-year chart, it too is somewhat steady and above the lows of a few months ago. A lead story in this morning's Wall Street Journal talked about how China was doing all it can to keep people employed. It gave the example of an aluminum smelter that was set to shut down parts of their operations due to low prices and low profit. The government then stepped in and dropped their electrical rates 30% so the smelter stayed mostly open. More global production, lower prices. A new chart here is Chinese car sales, which shows some major monthly variances. Or import more importantly though, their sales rate is over 20 million vehicles and it passed the U.S. sales rate of about 17 million years ago. April's jobs report indicated that 160,000 jobs were created in the U.S., which was less than the 200,000 forecast. This miss had the U.S. stock market go up due to a low jobs number puts more pressure on the Fed to keep interest rates low for a longer period of time. Imports of all goods into the U.S. hit a new low in March not seen in years. This was due to many factors including the lower cost of energy, but less steel imports, which is actually helping U.S. steel mills. This chart is the U.S. Tra trade of balance. For decades, we have had a negative trade of balance with the world. In March, it was the best it's been about 14 months and remains better than the 2006 high when oil prices and huge oil imports put a drag on the U.S. economy. Australia's economy is built heavily on the mining of raw materials, especially iron ore. With prices and volumes down, their economy is having problems, so last week they dropped their interest rates to record lows. U.S. car sales popped up in April from a low in March. April sales were 3.6% ahead of last year and are on path to have the second consecutive record sales in U.S. history at over 17 million units. Really great news. With that, we hope all have a safe and profitable week. My name is Greg Brown.